in the lush landscape of the Sierra Nevadas, where nature's grandeur inspires awe and creativity. A composer finds her muse amidst the towering peaks and vibrant wildflowers. In this episode, we explore the world of Alexis Ulrich, a visionary whose music transcends the boundaries of classical tradition, infusing it with a rich palette of global influences. From her first piano lessons to her advanced studies under the mentorship of Lou Harrison at Mills College, Alexis's musical path has been anything but ordinary. Her compositions, celebrated for their melodic and tonal richness, are a testament to a lifetime spent exploring the depths of minimalism, French Impressionism, gamelan, Chinese music, and the roots of American music tradition. Commissioned by and featuring the extraordinary talent of pianist Lynn Shugren, Sierra Rhapsody is a tribute to the awe-inspiring Sierra Nevadas a composition that promises to take the listener on a captivating musical journey. But as we prepare to delve into the story behind this work, one question lingers. How does one capture the essence of such majestic landscapes in a composition that resonates with the soul? Join us as Alexis Auret shares the inspiration behind Sierra Rhapsody and the artistic journey that led to its creation. In this exclusive interview, we'll uncover the magic that happens when the beauty of the Sierra Nevadas is transformed into a musical narrative and discover the unique voice of a composer that continues to redefine the classic music landscape. Ah, oh, great. Lexus, it's it's so nice to be able to chat with you. It, it's been a while. I mean, we do go way back and we were both founding members of the SFCCO and um, I've premiered a lot of your pieces. You premiered a lot of my pieces. Uh, but, you know, you ran off to uh, Hong Kong and, and I haven't seen too much of you since then. But uh, I know Hong Kong did you very well and um, you've written a lot of good music there and had your music played all over the world um, from from those opportunities that created there. I guess you've moved back to California and you're hanging out in the Sierra Nevadas with all the other great composers that like to hang out up there. I'm assuming that's a big part of the inspiration behind this this new work, Sierra Rhapsody. Yes, it is. This community is amazing. And it was some of the artists here that drew me to being here. Just... Uh, I was living in San Francisco and thinking, someday I'd like to live someplace a little more a quiet and a little uh, more relaxed lifestyle. So I found Grass Valley, and you know Terry Riley is nearby, and Gary Snyder, the poet, and there's a a real legacy of of new music that I heard about for decades, and it's really true. When I'm up here, just having this opportunity to write the Sierra Rhapsody and get it performed by the local orchestra is is amazing in a small town like this yeah that's that it's not something you always expect but you know that there is new music being played everywhere would you like to expand a little bit about um how you got this opportunity yes um i met a pianist here and she's this is a small town so she's kind of the main pianist and um she commissioned me a few years ago to write a piece, a solo for her. She was doing a project and uh, she wanted it to be something about the Sierras and to have a work of art connected with it. So I actually did a watercolor and that went with it and I called the piece The Voice of the Forest. So that was a short piano piece. And she played that and then she contacted me and wanted to commission a bigger piece for her to play. So um, she had the idea, she had the name and everything and, um, and the concept. So that's how it worked. So you're basically, you got a, a, a new friend up there, Connection, that commissioned this, this piece. Um, did you guys already have the orchestra laid out or did you have to then go hunt down someone to perform it? We did. We had to sort of petitioned the local group and uh and that was like a really open door it doesn't always work that way but uh they were open to it ken harden is the leader of that music director 
Yeah, in Concert Sierra. So he just said, sure. <laughs> He's wonderful to work with. Um, I've had all kinds of experiences, as I'm sure you have as a composer, and uh, people being more or less receptive to collaboration. And he was just completely open to collaboration. And he, we had a bunch of meetings about what do I want to hear in the piece. And it's a world premiere, so it's really important. The piece doesn't exist without that. So it was great to sit down and go over things that you can't always write down on the score, just balance and pacing and personality of the themes. Because it's very thematic. It's definitely kind of old school. It has themes. For sure. And, and um, you know, themes don't necessarily have to be uh, old school. It's just, you know, you're, I mean... I say this a lot, you know, we're in this wonderful period of time where um, you can pull through all sorts of different um, styles and stylistics. Uh, you're not married to any dogmas. So, um, you know, new work is new work. Uh, so it's very, very exciting that you had such a... Yeah, that's exactly how... Yeah, yeah. And very exciting how you had such a... Uh, a, a smooth process with this and and you were able to uh really uh make it happen without too much um go, going around which is always exciting it's not it's never never that easy um so you you I, i've read some of your program notes but maybe you want to share just a little bit more with uh the listeners about um the inspiration of of this this piece yes she said she she's lived here a long time and we're in the foothills so like an hour away from lake tahoe and uh she is very important to her as part of her identity the sierra mountains and so i wanted to have it be about that about that and i'm often inspired by nature and my music so that was a good fit and i actually went up there in the summer and i found this wonderful perch up in the granite rocks where i could see it was above daughter lake and i could see a lot of the spine of the sierras so i like to do that when i'm writing a piece about nature that just be there and then kind of quiet your mind and see what happens and I find I can remember that that feeling really well when I come back and I'm working on the nuts and bolts of the piece so I was there for I don't know an hour or two and, um, and that was kind of the uh, heart of the piece was that experience um, kind of being faced with the mountains so are you trying in the music are you trying to capture the emotional feelings that you felt by looking at that grandeur or is it a little more visual um that you're trying to capture some uh i mean we'll, we'll play a little clip later but i always felt your melody here um in this piece is extremely heroic um and so i wasn't <laughs> sure it, to me it just sounds very heroic uh, and I wasn't sure if that was uh, an emotional feeling or a grandeur visual feeling, uh, or, or is it both? Wow, that's a really good, interesting question. It's got to be both. It's got to be both. Um, I never think of myself as that emotional, like, like um, how would I say? Um, it's not about everyday emotions when you do music. It's a whole different, it's aesthetic. And so it, it's, mm. it is a lot of visual. I guess my mom was a painter and I got used to seeing things in colors and forms and, but, but, but yet it's also, I don't know, I have to say it's spiritual. I don't know. There's no other word for it. It's, it's a, it's a spirit. It's not mm. anything, um, earthly. It's, it's everything else, but that it's the, um, it's your, it's not exactly an emotion and it's not exactly just visual it's the reaction that you get when you're there um, it's, so you're, <laughs> you're 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 suggesting it 
there's a when you're seeing all this beautiful majestic landscape you you Will get you? a an emotional spirit that wells up I, during you and that um, is what you're sort of challenging channeling through your your music is is that yeah. a accurate description yeah that's that's what cool. it feels like all yeah. right um I, I was going to uh, play a little clip at the beginning on some of that heroic themes, uh, just to give people a sense of of what we're we're chatting about. This is the very beginning of your work. And the pianist is the, the woman who commissioned this work from, right? Right. I think you mentioned that there's a little Celtic influence to this. Is that is that right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's a to me, it's just so heroic the melody line. Yeah, it, it it brings to my mind too a little a little Barber Samuel Barber, and of course, um, very much so um, your your orchestration and and some of the other aspects is very much to one of your teachers, Lou Harrison. Um, and, and again, a lot of his some of his works also have these very heroic, bold, bold melodies like like this particular work of yours has. I should go back and listen to his third symphony. I wasn't um, or any symphony. I wasn't consciously thinking about it, but you know how influences are gets in the back yeah they, they just sneak in yeah I, I i was talking with my one of my composition professors about one of her works that you know has super influenced me and i was asking her what influenced her on it and i had a slightly different take of what her real influence was and then she was like oh yeah i, I uh i think that was an influence as well because i played that piece in 78 you know yeah it is it becomes part of you it, it comes out. Yeah, you internalize it. You're not mentally thinking about it. It just sort mm -hmm, of comes mm -hmm. out. Yeah, that put that I was consciously thinking Celtic because this area has a lot of Celtic roots. Um, it's like Cornish miners came here 100 years ago, 50 years ago. There's still a lot of that influence here. And uh, a lot of folk roots music that people play um and celtic you know there's a big celtic festival here every year so that's really in the air and so the six to eight time like you were talking about um, that's kind of celtic and uh, it's a little scotch snap or something um and i put a uh, part of the orchestration is is the psychology of the concerto because I'm thinking there's the audience, there's the soloist and there's the orchestra and everybody's waiting. What's the soloist going to, you know, what's, what's she like? What's she going to say? What's going to happen? So that moment when the piano enters is psychologically really important. 
and she has this kind of craggy music. Um, it's sort of broken off to see. Like that. And then see more going up the piano. So it's kind of like, mm, we're dealing with someone who knows what she's doing here. And it also, of course, serves the mood and the picture of the piece. Um, and I also, I, I the melody is uh, kind of lyrical, but I wanted a little cragginess to it. So I, I have these little interruptions in it. Um, that was kind of fun to have them work on. Um, yeah, so sh she's going. And I could have left it out. It could have been. Make the phrase more square. I could have done that. But I wanted to have this hitch in the middle of it. It prevents it from being just lyrical. So that's... Yeah, no, I, I think that that might, sounds like an excellent choice. I think that that break that breakup that you did in your melody, um, I, I think is wonderful because it, it really helps to um, extend the excitement, the interest. Um, it It's instead of just a simple little tune, you know, it, it's become so much more complex with those um, those additions. I mean, you're you're also a fantastic pianist, uh, and and I am sure, I, and I'm just curious on uh, how much easier that maybe made it for you to write such a wonderful piano part. Do you, do you feel like well, yeah. you just sort of like, oh, I know I can do this, so I know she can do this. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, it's my home instrument, so that makes it so much easier. I mean, I remember writing for guitar at Yikes. Um, that one's crazy. Or even marimba, it's a different world. And um, so yeah, piano is very comfortable and I can predict what's gonna happen. Um, she, it's fun to work with her because she brought out different sides of the music that I didn't really know. And, She's really nice. She's a big Beethoven performer and uh, romantic era, Brahms, that kind of thing. So she had this rich sound in a lot of it that was really nice. But she's also good at the scherzo elements. And I, I kind of, she wanted a one movement concerto, which was good because it's easier to get it played. It's almost <laughs> yeah. impossible. Three yeah. movement concerto played by a real orchestra. Um, yeah. So yeah. one movement is there's, more marketable, <laughs> but there's something I kind of, about that 15 minutes, right? That you, yeah. that 15 minute timeline for writing a piece that helps to get it played. <laughs> yeah. For the living composer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I kind of snuck in three movements <laughs> or even four movements, actually. That's what I wanted to talk about next, actually, um, is your form. So you call this a, a rhapsody. Um, but it is very much a concerto. How did you decide on your structure for your work? Well, it's tailor-made for this material, so I didn't base it on anything except for just ordinary compositional logic. Um, and I wanted, I knew I wanted, and I was seeing the audience here too. It's a, it's a sophisticated but small town audience. So they're very kind of open-hearted, and I knew I I could write a base it seriously on a melody, the whole piece, and nobody was going to lift an eyebrow and say that I was being too I don't know accessible or something. Um, so I I that melody goes through the whole piece, and I repeat it a lot. <laughs> I've been doing a little research on repetition. And for one, I found out that Scheherazade repeats its main melody 37 times. <laughs> so I thought, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. Or Bolero is even worse. Yeah. <laughs> it, but any piece that where people can remember the melody or they associate the, the piece with them of a melody, it's, it's repetition. I mean, it has to be mm -hmm. memorable. 
in the first place. But um, even a complex piece, but Bach or you name it, anybody complex, modern off, or you know, every everybody in the standard repertoire, there's a huge amount of repetition that it doesn't register that way because it's always evolving. So what I was taught in school pretty much um, don't repeat. You know, the second time it's going to be boring or it's too it's too obvious. And when we mm. analyze like a 12 tone piece and um, there was there was no exact repetition. And um, and that was a model in school that, so that it's like repetition was kind of childish or something but looking at it myself and going through the literature uh, that's not right repetition is a huge part of classical music it's i think of it more like a conversation i think just in general of all music it's 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 important it it doesn't have to be an exact repetition as you as you pointed out um uh and you, you know some of my works are quite chaotic and crazy but I will repeat a phrase or um, hide a phrase throughout the entire piece. You can't, it's, it's constant. I, I couldn't imagine not uh, having things repeated in, in some way, shape or form. Maybe they're twice as fast or twice as slow, but um, yeah, I, I couldn't imagine that advice. <laughs> I luckily didn't get that advice. <laughs> so. I guess I'm 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 exaggerating. It, um, it was more like, don't don't be obvious. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and, and I get don't why repeat you repeat it so that they can sing along. Right, and, and I get why you wouldn't necessarily go an ABA form and make the A exactly the same, and you know without right. you know because they didn't do that. They they certainly changed it up and maybe went from minor to major at the end, or um, you know uh, uh, left it in the a different key. Um, you know, it's more extreme these days, but, uh, you know, I, I'm, of my fourth symphony, I'm working on a, uh, a, a, a bit of a, the first movement sort of approaches the Beethoven's, uh, fifth symphony, which is yeah. nothing but the repetition of, you know, four notes. I've turned it into five notes, but that same thing that really drove home writing that piece and using that as a model really drove home the, the essence of repeating something but making it very unique each time uh in many cases which uh-huh. you know i think you you've you've done a bit of that in your work there there's certainly parts where you bring back the theme uh quite obviously but other times it's it's different uh, it does sort of bring me back to the next little question i have about your work is uh listening to it i almost felt like there was maybe a story behind it or some sort of thematic vision there there's one part in it where um you know it it feels um uh extremely like delicate nature maybe a little bird sounds type of thing but without like intentionally trying to mimic a bird it was more just the melody that had that feel or that quality so i was curious if there was there was any sort of programmaticism related to this work. yet there's no story like a like a through line narrative but there's images for myself and and I got such interesting comments afterwards that everybody kind of projected their own Sierra experience and they say oh you did the minnow and oh I I saw this you know the certain river da 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 and (laughs) it's always so fun to hear that but I I have this snapshot images in my mind like the spine of the Sierras and then and then a meadow with flowers, you know, in the spring and a little water running through it. And then, and then yes, birds. And then the ice and the snow, that was a big part of it. To me, there's parts that sound cold mm. higher up in the glittery part of the piano. So, yeah, that's kind of the images that I had in mind. Not a narrative, really. Cool. Because the narrative is more about the, the, piano, the, the performance, mm. the pianist and the orchestra. Um, you know what? I think there's some minors in it too. <laughs> there's a kind of the coda. 
and it's kind of like oh, mm, oh. okay yeah i can see th- I, I i know the part you're talking about um and i can see that let me see if i can bring that up there we go miners hard at work cool yeah i always really love being able to talk to composers like this because new things get teased out of the piece for you um i like i said i didn't know there was celtic folks up uh or or the or the the long history of celtic music up in these sierras and i get uh i i i miss the the minor reference but i totally hear it once soon as you said it i knew which part you were talking about and i i totally hear it um and i I, to me you hit the you hit sort of the trifecta or the or the glory for for composers where i i'm a bit with you i i, I sometimes my music's a little pragmatic sometimes it, but it's, it's a lot of it can be visual but i really like it to where my visual isn't the same as your visual but that it's just shared that you that you project your own thoughts and feelings and images right because I, I always feel it's it, it becomes a more shared experience when people are putting their own frame of reference into it, but that the music causes them to do that. So to hear that you got that feedback, to me, sounds like you just nailed this piece. (laughs) (laughs) It's really fun to hear, you know, because they think it's in the music, like literally in the music. Oh, you wrote that part about this something, something. It's like, no, it's you, but (laughs) the music evoked it. So, yeah, that's really yeah. neat. Uh, yeah, that that's this that is awesome. Uh, that is so much for to me what it what it's about. You mentioned before that this is a little bit of a multi movement uh, work, um, uh, but you're still using the main theme throughout it. You're not necessarily introducing new themes in each movement. Is that right? Well, and there's. There's an adagio section, which mm-hmm. does use the main theme, but really drawn out, spun out. But then there's a kind of a scherzo. Here it is. Here it starts on the flute. Um... And it, it's it's in high register. It's playful. I'm thinking an alpine meadow, little animals. A marmot something um, <laughs> <laughs> and also I knew that she's I wanted to stretch the pianist or give her a lot of stuff to dig into and I know she's good at these kind of things so that's uh, another reason to have a nice variety for her a palette for her okay. and then it, it kind of goes with the images and then I can also do like a piano background with this chordal sound mm-hmm. um, it's one of the textures i wanted to use it doesn't really make that much sense with the first theme but it it um works with this scherzo theme got it got it a lot of the decisions were about the piano part sure sure that makes sense right that's who you're featuring so after the scherzo, uh, you said there were there are four movements, and and so you have your your first movement, the heroic one, an adagio, and a scherzo. What's the is the last the uh, a recap at the beginning with a coda or letter L, and that's when we have mm-hmm. this. Um... Uh, the minor theme. Mm-hmm. Yes, minor and the minor key. That it's sort of a fourth movement idea and then i actually have a coda um i i've done this in a couple pieces i I hope it's okay to steal from myself 
absolutely good to steal from yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a, it's a pasta call you. Oh, because okay. I, okay. I like it too, because it, the chords are going around and around. And then, wow. and then I got to do, technically I did every instrument group in the orchestra. And each um, choir and uh, separately. So they each had their moment mm -hmm. in one one round, one or two rounds of the Pasakali uh, chord progression. Um, so I have the the brass and the woodwinds and the strings each doing um, a, a moment when that ensemble plays is the featured ensemble in the orchestra. So that's this kind of fun orchestration thing I was playing with. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's to build up just coda tension because it's it's repeating this chord progression. And then um, and then I kind of back off and have a quiet thing with with <laughs> I use wire brushes on the cymbals. And mm -hmm. a, a former student of mine, he now does all kinds of pop music and video games and TV music. He says, why did you put hi-hat jazz moment in there? And I, I wasn't thinking that way. I thought, what's a texture that would be a surprise? So yeah. um, I wasn't thinking of the context. Like, like some lounge. I mean, I, and I do a lot of jazz, but I still took it as being just, um, is repeating something that you did before, but in a more delicate manner. Um, I didn't, and, right. and with a slightly new texture, I didn't actually take it as a jazz sound as much as I, I took it as, okay, now it's a little more delicate. It's a little, it's a little, it has, I don't know, sometimes brushes like that, some sort of have a watery, water, rainy kind of quality to them. Uh, as well so I took it well, I took it more well, of that personally yeah. but that that's what I was thinking too and it's a, a hush before the end yeah well at least you you and I at least got got the same intent <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah there's a there's a recap where the melody the original theme is shortened and and goes up and is loud that's the recap within the coda. So those are the different, that's structure, I guess. Structure was, you know, unique for this piece, but it's based on the first melody. And then, um, and then uh, you almost could call it a rondo because I've used the other two, the adagio and then the scherzo. And then we're always coming back to the original melody and then a coda. So that's the structure. To hear you explain these things with better detail, it, it helps to just, uh, I think, reaffirm things that, that came to me while I was listening to it. Um, so that, that's that's always really nice. So I guess my real last question is, is what's next? Do you have a piece that you're starting? Um, you've got uh, some new plans of anything in the works? I'm in the middle of a piece. It's called a Wolf Creek Anthem. And this was a grant, and it's a community-involved project, which I also really like doing. Um, so I'm I'm writing a piece about this this the local watershed, and there's Wolf Creek, and here it's a it's a nice little creek that flows into the Bear River. It starts not very far from where I am right now, um, but it's it's little appreciated because it's partly underground it's near um, industrial parts of town so uh it, it it doesn't have the profile that other bodies of water have and we're trying to raise awareness of it and i i got i found a group called the the wolf creek community alliance and so they're they're my grant partner and we're um we're working together on that, and I get to use the instruments um, uh, marimba, again, five octave marimba, uh, mm -hmm. oboe, um, folk harp, there's an excellent folk harpist here, and, and four strings. So it has a really nice palette that I'm using. And, and in a song, I got lyrics from a friend of a friend, 
beautiful lyrics that he wrote for this project. And so um, it's going to be a sing along. So this is very community rooted. Um, and we're, we're trying, it's got a, it's got a message. It's got a program that we want people to recognize Wolf Creek. So this is not just um, abstract music this time. Cool. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Um, I look forward to being able to hear it once it's finished and performed. Um, Was it? That's, uh, that First sounds, uh, sounds like still always have things in the hopper, which is good. Um, I, I certainly hope sometime you feel like having a piece done again by the SFCCO, you know, feel free to drop it off at our, at our, at our feet. Uh, you're always, uh, always welcome. Even if you're living up there in the Sierra Nevadas to, to, uh, participate, uh, with us. I, I, I miss playing your work. Yeah. I hope to be down there in in person one of these days. Yeah. No, we, I'd love to see you. 